Hello, and welcome to Living Faith Lutheran Church. I wanted to take a moment to welcome each and every one of you and give you a little insight into who we are and what we're about before we begin worship today. The name of our congregation is, of course, Living Faith, and the word congregation is inclusive of all those who choose to worship with us, no matter where they are in the world. The reality is we're no longer defined by a simple physical address. The Martin Luther in me wants to ask the question, what does this mean? It means that the Holy Spirit has powerful things in store and the daily and the, and daily the Spirit is broadening our horizons and beckoning, motivating, urging and pushing us to a deeper actualization of our name. Thanks, Pastor. That really cleared that all up. What this means is that I was thinking about our name and I had one of those schoolhouse rock moments when I realized that the living in our name functions both as an adjective and as a verb. As an adjective, living describes the noun fate as one with, as Luther would describe it, a profound love of God for God's people and for all of the whole creation. As a verb, what that's where things get exciting. As we worship, and worship is not just this short video time in the midst of a 168 hour week, worship is about living faith. The Schoolhouse Rock song says, verb, I get my thing from action, to work, to play, to live, to love. All 168, 24 seven, 365, until our faith becomes sight in the kingdom of God. So we wish you peace and invite you to live faith with us whenever you, wherever you reside on our planet, to be active and to bring justice, hope, peace, and comfort to a hurting world, to clothe the naked, to lift up the lowly, to bring healing to the sick, to feed the hungry, to console the brokenhearted, and to make Christ known both in both word and deed. If you so desire, if you're searching for a church family either to worship with in person or from afar, a family with which to share your joys and sorrows and triumphs and failings, your hopes and your fears, your gifts and your talents, we want you to know that you're welcome with us. And I would be remiss if I didn't make, uh, make, it aware, make everyone aware that you can subscribe to our newsletters and find my contact information at livingfaithlutheran.org. We hope to hear from you. God bless, and let us prepare our hearts and minds for worship. In the beginning, in our beginning, we were only dust, knowing nothing of the good and evil only the pure innocence of God. And in that garden, alongside Creator, the birth giver, witness to life, begetting life, we were shameless. Known in our nakedness and freely creating work was being human. Standing at the edge of the garden Things were not the same. They were fragile. And we needed protection, so we hid behind uh, trees, behind each other, and our lives. And work was no longer about creating, it's surviving. And individuated from God, we sought shelter from, from the pain of the memory of what we'd lost. But at the edge we stood, never alone, but a pale reflection of our former selves. Would we remember how to be man and woman again? Or would we know how to walk together with, with clear vision of each other? Not as self-made image, but, but as souls sheltered in the divine, searching for the one who created and loved. From the garden, I, I entered the wilderness of my striving, where I encountered demons, 
my demons. And the shifting sands and the, the dirt between my toes as a reminder of my mortality to seek, to fill the hunger, to remember who I was. But really, always forgetting, getting caught up in, in work or in another, or distractions. There were days where my dreams became fantasy. Painting myself into a corner to surround myself with all those I loved, including a life that I left behind. Stretching myself across a canvas of memories, the walk across the painted desert, to stand up on the highest cliff and to look down and hold kingdoms in my palm. It's temptation before me. And what they were for me, they were for the Son of Man. A deep growl in a hungry soul. Jesus came to face himself and his frailty. But he feasted on food made of words baked in the mouth of God. Words of, of life and hope that promised another way back to lush lands where we could be together with the one who never left us alone. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the keeper of the covenant, the source of steadfast love, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. God hears us when we cry and draws up close in Jesus Christ. Let us return to the one who is full of compassion. Fountain of living water, pour out your mercy up over us. Our sin is heavy and we long to be free. Rebuild what we have ruined and mend what we have torn. Wash us in your cleansing flood. Make us alive in the spirit to follow in the way of Jesus as healers and restorers of the world you so love. Amen. Beloved, God's word never fails. The promise rests on grace. By the saving love of Jesus Christ, the wisdom and the power of God, your sins are forgiven, and God remembers them no more. Journey in the way of Jesus. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Holy God, Heavenly Father, in the waters of the flood you saved the chosen, and in the wilderness of temptation, you protected your son from sin. Renew us in the gift of baptism. May your holy angels be with us, that the wicked, that the wicked foe may have no power over us. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen.
today's first reading is Genesis 9, verses 8 through 17. God said to Noah and his sons with him, As for me, I am establishing the covenant with you and the, your descendants after you, and with every living creature that is with you, the birds, the domestic animals, and every animal of the earth with you, as many as came out of the ark. I'll establish my covenant with you that never again shall all the flesh be cut off by the waters of the flood, and never again shall there be a flood to destroy the earth. God said, this is a sign of the covenant and I that I make between me and you and every living creature that is with you. For all future generations, I have set my bow in the clouds, and it shall be a sign of the covenant between me and the earth. When I bring clouds over the earth, and the bow is seen in the clouds, I will remember my covenant that is between me and you and every living creature of all flesh. And the water shall never again become a flood to destroy all flesh. When the bow is in the clouds, I will see it and remember the everlasting covenant between God and every living creature of all flesh that is on the earth. God said to Noah, this is a sign of the covenant that I have established between me and all flesh that is on the earth. Word of God, word of life, thanks be to God. Today we'll be reading Psalm 25, verses 1 through 10. Please read the bold with me. To you, O Lord, I lift up the soul of my soul. My God, I put in trust with you. Let me not be put to shame nor let my enemies triumph over me. Let none who look up to me be put to shame. Rather, let those be put to shame who trenches. Show me your ways, O Lord, and teach me your paths. Lead me in your truth and teach me, for you are the God of my salvation, and you have entrusted all day long. Remember, O Lord, Remember, O Lord, your compassion and love, for, for they are from everlasting. Remember not the sins of my youth or my congregation. Remember my, according to my steadfast love, and for the sake of, of your goodness, O Lord, you are gracious and upright, O Lord. Therefore, you teach sinners in your way. You lead the lowly in justice. You teach the lowly in your way. All your paths, O Lord, are steadfast love and faithfulness to those who keep your convent and your testimonies. Word of God, word of life, and speed to God. Today we'll be reading the first Peter, the verses 18 to 22. Had God acted through Christ's suffering the death to bring us to God, so God acts through baptism to save us from sinful existence. The spiritual cleansing marks our new life in Christ. Christ also suffered for, for sins once for all, the righteous for the unrighteous, in order to bring you to God. He was put to death in the flesh, but made alive in the spirit, in which also he went and made pro a proclaimer to spirits in prison, who, who in former times did not obey. When God when it waited patiently in the days of Noah, during the building of the ark, in which a few, that is, that is eight prisons per persons, were saved through water and baptism, which is prefigured, now saves you not as a removable of dirt from a bot from the body but as an appeal to God for a God for a good conscience through the resurrection of Jesus Christ who has gone into heaven and is at the right hand of God with angels authorities and powers it's subject to him what of Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the first chapter. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee 
and was, and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the Spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, the Beloved. With you I am well pleased. And the Spirit immediately drove him out into the wilderness. He was in the wilderness 40 days, tempted by Satan, and he was with the wild beasts, and the angels waited on him. Now after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God and saying, the, king, the, the time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news, the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You know, water is serious business. The Chinese sage Lao Tzu said, Nothing in the world is as soft and yielding as water, yet for dissolving the hard and inflexible, nothing can surpass it. You know, I really get this. It makes sense to me because I've experienced it, and I've worked with some of the principles behind it. Have you, have you ever gone out to play in the waves of the ocean and played a game that pits yourself with all of your human strength and knowledge against the weak-as-water, non-sentient ocean? You stand flat-footed and broad-chested and try to defy the waves at the breaking point. You think, you can't knock me down. Yes, yes, they can. Some of the ocean's waves travel 9,000 miles before they reach their destination. You know, for fun, I did some, a quick math estimate and found that there are about 353 quintillion gallons of water in the oceans at about 2.7 sextillion pounds. So the game of defy the ocean is a fun but futile game. Usually a wave will kick you like a mule and send you head over heels toward the beach until the ocean's just done with you. In some situations, it can tumble bulldozers and carry away buildings. Water is powerful. Many a kid and adult have learned that once your body gets about 18 to 24 inches below the surface, you can no longer breathe through a snorkel or hose. Your lungs just won't push against it. You know, you can't compress water. It's filled with mystery from surface tension to hot water freezing faster than cold water. Look it up to the fact that we don't understand the exact process that makes ice ice made of water, slippery. It can be dark, confining, limiting, devastating, and murderous. Yet, yet when my son Nathan was little, we put a really secure little life jacket on him, and I put him on a boogie board, and we would give him a, and I would give him a shove as a wave was breaking. He would take off towards his mom and the land, surfing, surfing seemingly forever, all the way to the shore. I was so jealous, but the ocean made me a rock star in my kids' eyes. Water also propels, moves, cleanses, and sustains us. Lao Tzu was right. Water has two natures. In this week's readings, water and baptism are featured prominently, and the focus highlights these two natures, water destroying and water saving, from Noah and his family to Jesus at the River Jordan on to us. Whenever I think about the flowing waters of baptism, I always end up thinking about the quote from the prophet Amos. It's in the fifth chapter of Amos, verse 24. But let justice roll on like a river, righteousness like a never-failing stream. You know, we don't think of tiny trickles as rolling. For a river to be rolling, there's got to be some power there and uncontainability. The verse draws me to the question, 
which, which nature of water do we perceive? Do we perceive the waters as dark, confining, limiting, a series of thou shalt nots with threats of damnation? Or do we see the waters of baptism as life-giving streams, endless, unfailing fountains of unstoppable and uncontainable grace and love? Water that does wash away and destroy, water does wash away, though, and destroy wickedness within us. Do we stand and play defy the ocean, or do we surf the tides of baptism? Do we experience the thundering chaos or the propelling flow? Do we feel cleansed or dashed? Do we perceive grace and justice as something that gives or takes away? Here's the thing. Being baptized is not only having God's love poured onto you, but also into you, all of us. The waters of baptism also bring to, uh, bring to mind the coolest moving water thing I've ever seen. The first time I ever saw this trick or phenomenon was at Epcot at Disney World. The trick is a fountain of squirting water but it's no ordinary fountain or water burst. The water comes out and looks like a glass tube or glass ball. It retains its shape and flies through the air and looks remarkably clear. I've had water poured on me, stood under a waterfall, been sprayed with a garden hose, and been shot with a fire hose. And all of them have the same thing in common. Aside from getting me wet, I could feel the sensation of, of droplets hitting and pounding on me. All the water seems to kind of come apart, but the water that I'm talking about, the magic water, it all stays together. And I cannot describe the sensation of the one water hitting you or what it feels like to catch one of those little water balls in your hand. Well, Maybe it's not magic. Actually, it's pure science. To create water columns like this, you merely take advantage of what the physicists call laminar flow. The opposite of laminar flow would be a turbulent flow, which is what we most often encounter. Now, Wikipedia will tell you that laminar flow occurs when a fluid flows in parallel layers, with no disruption between those layers. At low velocities, the fluid tends to flow without lateral mixing, and the adjacent layers slide past one another like playing cards. There's no cross currents perpendicular to the direction of flow, nor eddies or swirls of the fluids. In laminar flow, the motion of the particles of the fluid is very orderly with all the particles moving in a straight line parallel to the pipe walls. A turbulent flow is characterized by conflict, disorder, or confusion, and is not controlled or calm. The water molecules are defying the wave and crashing around head over heels. There's a remedy or a cure for turbulence. In water or fluid dynamics, you introduce screens like rolled up scotch bright pads, and you control the flow which calms the turbulence and gets all the water molecules flowing in harmony with a common direction. That's how the Imagineers at Disney pull off the jumping fountains and juggling balls of water. We as humans, we as human beings, behave just like water or dynamic fluids. Left to our own devices, we crash into one another. We cling to the wrong things, like fluids adhering to the walls of a pipe and spinning off in the wrong direction. We move fast and take no prisoners and create chaos and turbulence and disharmony around us. When Christ was baptized, 
He was immediately driven out into the wilderness. Jesus went with the flow of the Spirit that descended at his baptism to a place to prepare for the way of the cross. The waters led him to the wilderness, to the place where people have no hope, dwell. Jesus' life and acts, act of love and grace that he made on the cross stands as one of those screens that gets us flowing in harmony and peace. It says in, our pro, in, in Proverbs that God established the fountains of the deep. He assigned to the sea its limit so that the waters might not transgress his command. God created and understands fluid dynamics. Also, our human needs, desires, wants, and our fondness for defying the waters. God saw the turbulence and defiance in our system, and even watched as his son got caught in it like a crashing wave. So he made some changes to the system. Through faith, our lives flow through the grace of the cross and are put back into harmony. Justification or being made right is nothing less or more than the promise that God accepts you as you are, not because of who you are, or what you've done, not because of what you might become or do, not because of who you have promised to be or what you have pledged to do, but that God accepts you because that's who God is and what God does. Justify the ungodly in order that he might know, that we might know peace and turn in love to extend the same grace, mercy, and acceptance to everyone else around us. Paul tells us in his letter to the Romans that since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have obtained access to his grace in which we stand. The Spirit organizes us into a laminar flow, to be a community that looks outward rather than inward, or even upward. We are not called to survive, but to bear witness to the peace of God in Christ that responds to the needs of our neighbors, outward, not upward. God doesn't need our good works. Our neighbor does, as Luther said. In a sense, God in Christ takes care of all the vertical dimensions of our lives, our relationship with him and our eternal destiny, so that we can throw ourselves into the horizontal dimensions of our life with those around us. When we turn our eyes outward and extend the peace of God that allows us to transform suffering, ours and that of others, it transforms it into endurance character, and hope. Because we have experienced God's love, the Spirit of Christ is surely present. This is living the cruciform life, or the life of the cross. Receiving from God and serving as vessels or conduits to pass it on. In this life, in, uh, in this, the turbulence, the conflict, the disorder, confusion, roughness, storminess, tempestuous winds, the wild and raging violence are ordered and redirected into the fruits of the Spirit. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. These are a description of a laminar flow life, a life that flows through the cross of Jesus Christ and that is changed by it so that it can flow out into creation as an awesome and spectacular thing. When we are flowing together, 
It's a beautiful thing, better than jumping fountains or juggling water. It's our mission. And what God intended ever since God laid down the foundations of the earth. Amen. Relying on the promises of God, we boldly pray for the church, the world, and all in need. In Jesus, your realm has come near to us in every place and time. 
Give your church throughout the world a spirit of humility and repentance. Teach us to trust always in the good news of your salvation. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. You have made a covenant of mercy with every living creature. Protect all the earth's creatures from destruction. Empower the work of biologists, conservationists, and science educators. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. All your paths are steadfast love and faithfulness. Direct the words and actions of leaders in our community and throughout the world that they may maintain justice for the lowly. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Even in the wilderness, you are with us. Walk alongside migrants and refugees crossing dangerous lands. Tend to those whose lives feel desolate. Give healing and strength to all who suffer, especially your servants on our prayer list those who are suffering the far-reaching ill effects of COVID-19, and those whose name we name aloud or in the silence of our hearts. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. In the covenant of baptism, you claim us as beloved children, nurture us in our baptismal identity, and teach us to live within it for the sake of others. Strengthen this congregation's ministries of care and concern, especially waiting in the word, Seafarers, YEP, St. Stephen's Clothing Ministry, Trinity and Redeemer's Food Banks, and the Holy Grail Food Truck. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. In baptism, you join us to the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. We praise you for all those who have died trusting in your faithfulness. Bring us with them to the fullness of your reign. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. We entrust ourselves and all our prayers to you, O faithful God, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us now pray together the prayer our Lord taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. You are what God made you to be, created in Christ Jesus for good works, freed to serve your neighbor. God bless you that you may be a blessing in the name of the holy life-giving Trinity. Amen. Go in peace. Share the good news. Thanks be to God.